everybody, and welcome back to our Sunday evening conversation. Uh, we're glad you joined us. As always, we're very, very grateful for uh, the number of people who've been watching our videos and our services, and we, we thank you very much. Let me just start off by giving you a few announcements, um, and these are just really reminders for, for the next few weeks. I want you to remember that our office hours are from 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m., each day, Monday through Friday, and we're available other times as well, but we're somebody will be here, either Jeremiah or myself, will be here from 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. each Monday through Friday. Each Monday evening, the leadership of the church, we get together at 7 p.m. and we pray, we discuss the way forward during this time, and so be in prayer for our leadership here at Hampton. They, they are praying for you each Monday night, so you, you be in prayer for them. Uh, again, I want to thank you for your generosity and your continued support for the church during this time, and just remind you of the ways that you can give. You can drop it off here at the church during our office hours. You can mail it by uh, getting a self-addressed envelope from Jeremiah. He'll send it to you on upon your request, or you can give online uh, via our website. But again, we thank you for your continued support for the church. Um, also, we want to thank you for using our website, and we, we ask you to continue to use the, the prayer part of our uh, website where you can go and click that where it says prayer request and click, click that and you can submit your prayer request to us here and we'll, we'll make sure they, those get read each Wednesday night. Um, we're still making sure that each one of you gets a phone call each week and if you're not if you're not on our list please call the office during our office hours and, and we'll make sure that you're contacted each week to make sure that you don't have a need that we're missing and then there's one final thing um, may the 10th we're planning our very first service back together again but it'll be a little different it's via a drive-in church format it'll be behind the church out surrounding the shed uh, that Sunday morning. And we're going to fill in some of the details over the next couple of weeks, but we want you to plan on that day being here and worshiping with us. Uh, again, that is Mother's Day, and we've got maybe a couple of special things that we're going to, we're going to do during that service. Uh, again, once again, we love each of you. We're very grateful for your love and the many ways that you show it to us. Hopefully we can return that in the weeks and the months going forward. One other thing, each day at 8.28, either a.m. or p.m., we would like for you to pray. Pray for one another, pray for the church, pray for our community, and pray for our country. We understand when we read that verse from Romans 8.28 that all these things that are happening to us right now are for our good, deemed important and necessary from heaven, from our wonderful Father. Now, have you ever wondered how the times in which we live can be good? I, I know that our Heavenly Father has said through the Apostle Paul that all things work together for our good, but have you ever just looked up to heaven and said, how can this be for our good, God? How can this that we are separated and not worshiping it again be for our good? Well, the psalmist may have given us a little hint. He said this in Psalm 119. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may know your statutes. Pretty amazing. It's good for me that I've been distressed, that I've been troubled, so that I can know what you're doing, what you say for me to do you know why is affliction good well there's a fellow in the bible named joseph that is a perfect example his rise to power in a foreign land it's just simply amazing it's mind-boggling when you think about it. it it was a place where egypt that is was a place where they looked down on his kind they looked down because of his nationality they also looked down at him because of what he did for a living. He was a shepherd. And 
according to Genesis chapter 43, that, that, wasn't the, that wasn't the highest place on the totem pole of occupations. But God had a reason that Joseph was promoted over and over again. And we know that reason. It was to prepare a place for Jacob's family. But why were the Egyptians so willing to promote Joseph? And why were they so willing and so taken with Joseph? Again, a clue may be in Psalm 119. Here the psalmist said from God's word, he said, in God's word it makes me wiser than my enemies and it gives me more understanding than all my teachers. How did the psalmist gain such attention and such favor from the nation of Egypt because he had a commitment to the statutes of God. And how did he come to that commitment? Through affliction. Before jo Joseph was promoted to power in Egypt, he suffered. He suffered in an Egyptian prison because he was falsely accused. You see, suffering, affliction, trials, hardships, they do one of two things. They either drive us to God and to his word, or they drive us away from God and from his word. In Joseph's case, in his affliction, it drove him to God, resulting in him knowing God better and his truth better. And it became something that the nation of Egypt was able to look on and say, that's wisdom in the climate of today don't let the circumstances drive you from God but drive you to God reach out to him and embrace his promises remember he said he'd never leave you he'll never forsake you no matter the circumstances you find yourself in have you ever wondered how today can be good Every day is good if you'll reach out to God and learn from him. Let's pray together. Father, we are grateful for your goodness, even when we deem it not good. We know that every day, every moment of every day is controlled and directed by you. And it is according to your purpose and your plan for our lives. Lord, help us to walk in that and to deem your ways holy and good. Father, we pray for our church. We pray for all those, Lord, who we are separated from. And again, it is hard for us to understand and see the good, but we are drawn to you. We are drawn to your word that assures us that it is. Help us by faith to accept these days and to walk forward hand in hand with you in your holiness and in your righteousness. Thanks for being our God. Thanks for taking care of us in these trying times. Bless each one who makes Hampton Christian Church their home. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.